What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin Bees. I'm a wife, a mom, a military veteran, and I spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing, healed my way out, and now I'm using all of my social media platforms to educate and raise awareness around the dangers of multi-level marketing companies and the tactics used by their reps. If you're brand new to my channel, hello, I'm so glad that you are here. And uh, if you've been here a while, appreciate you guys. Shout out to everybody that has subscribed to my channel. I'm so excited because we are well beyond 9,000 subscribers now, which is very exciting. And also want to give a special shout out to all of the members. Thank you guys for your support. And I really do enjoy our conversations in the Discord. So thank you guys for that. Today, um, before I even dive in, actually, uh, if you'd like to follow me on social media, here are my social media handles. I'm the most active on Instagram, but I have a lot of fun on TikTok as well. So feel free to follow me there if you would like. And uh, today's video is a video. Today's video is a video. We're going to roll with it. Uh, put out by Eric Worry several weeks ago, and he's going to teach us how to how to deal with feedback. So I have watched a little bit of it, which is why I'm kind of like grinning and stuff, because in my opinion, it's ridiculous. And watching MLMers determine whose opinion matters and whose doesn't statistics and data that matters and statistics and data that doesn't matter is fascinating to me. And uh, so we're going to watch it together. So drop your commentary below and let's do this thing. Feedback's a funny thing. It's a really funny thing. Um, I was insecure about writing GoPro as an example, really insecure about it because I'm not a writer. Um, and I'd hired like six different ghost writers over the course of five years and, and none of them worked out and it was awful. And, and, uh, sounds a lot like the social media, what is the term for that manager, social media manager, allegedly he has gone through quite a few people when it comes to social media managers. I guess that's the word I want to use. I find that interesting. But I, 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 I'm just not a writer. I just don't know how to do it. And, and my wife helped me. She just said, you know, hey, you know how to speak. Just, just tell them. Write it how you would say it. Like, hmm. I guess I could do that. Um, but I, 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 you know, I still felt like an imposter in the process. Um, so, but I went through it. And, 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 and I liked it better and better and better and better. But it, you know, the, the, the confidence thing kicked in, not when it was written. I mean, there was a little piece of self-worth and confidence there, but the feedback. When I got the feedback from the world, all of you, they're like, oh, this really helped. Like, oh, thank God. It didn't really change my confidence that much as a writer, but I was relieved. I liked being able to say I'm an author, even though I'm not a writer. You know, I like the fact that it, I mean, it's, I'm proud of it, but I still, I still do, I'm not confident when it comes to writing. Isn't that something? Even with the feedback. All the positive reviews, you know, you go on Amazon, there's, I don't know, between three and 4,000 positive reviews, and almost all of them are five star. Guess when the ones that, that impact me the most? The few that don't like me. This egotistical POS. <laughs> okay. Sorry. You know? So what's, what's really sad about, I mean, it, what's really weird about that, it shows the, the incongruity. I'll, I'll message every, every one-star review, any negative review, and I'll offer them a refund and say, sorry, it wasn't for you. And I skim through the five stars. You know what that reminds me of? When there are people that I feature on my videos that are in an MLM, so like MLM leaders, uh, and they'll go through the comments and then they'll find people that they know and they'll message them and say, oh, so this is the kind of person you are? 
oh, I can't believe you. I have never done anything to you. And here you are supporting this anti MLM message. Oh, and then they block them literally just happened, I think last week. <laughs> and that's what this reminds me of. I mean, I get, I get the business aspect of it. If somebody is not happy with their purchase, you know, you message them and refund them, but we're talking about an MLM coach. And for those of you that aren't aware, Eric worry is an MLM coach and he offers masterminds and events and all kinds of stuff. <sighs> I've been to so many of his events when I was in multi-level marketing. I'll save that probably for another day. <laughs> but that's what this reminds me of. Isn't that weird? The little one negative thing that happens at a, at a period of time. So you got to be really careful the weight that you allow an opinion to have on you. It needs to be appropriate because there is some aspect of feedback that's really, really good and important. You need to seek out feedback all the time. And if somebody I'm just I'm waiting for it, you guys. I'm interested in how he is going to in some way, shape or form, bring up people that are close to somebody in an MLM that says, Hey, I think this might be you know, a commercial call to a scam or whatever, however that's presented. I'm waiting for him to say, well, those opinions don't matter, but these are the opinions that you need to pay attention to. <sighs> it's fascinating to me how they do this. Absolutely fascinating. It gives you feedback. You need to be able to look for the truth, not the untruth. Learn from that but don't let the, the untrue parts of it impact your actions in the future. So the you untrue parts of it. So he says you need to be able to decipher or determine the true, the truth and the untrue parts. And in my opinion, I think he's setting this up to give people a way out when somebody comes to them maybe they saw an anti mlm video maybe they had their own experience in the same multi-level marketing company that a friend or a family member is joining and that person goes to the friend the friend says hey listen i was a part of that company or i saw this video the other day i should send it to you i think he's giving people a way out kind of like ray higdon is like if it's not for you that's cool it's giving kind of a way out when they're presented with these situations where somebody is upset about a cold message or somebody's upset about a family member joining a multi-level marketing company where 99.7% of people lose money or don't make any at all, according to the FTC. I think that's what he's doing. But what do you guys think? You've got to be discerning. If you want to build up your confidence, you got to be discerning. If you have some ignorant family member who, who has stopped dreaming a long time ago, and they're not him villainizing a family member that is concerned for another family member by calling them ignorant and giving up on their dreams. Wh wow. It's so interesting to watch this after I was I, I left multi level marketing because I would have applauded that while I was in I would have been like, Yeah, you're right, you know, they shouldn't be saying that they should be supporting my dreams. They gave up on their dreams a long time ago. And now I listen to it and I'm like, he's polarizing the community. He's in my opinion, encouraging his audience when a family member brings up, Hey, I'm concerned about this. He's encouraging them to label them essentially as a hater again, my opinion, but it's just really interesting to see it after I got out of an MLM and I have a completely different filter versus when I was in multi-level marketing. Cause I definitely have spent some time, uh, with this individual. They're impacting your decision or they're trying to impact your decision about network marketing. You have to be very careful the weight that you give that. 
you, on one side, you want to you want to take a lot of weight, a lot of uh, uh, importance to somebody who's achieved what you want to achieve, somebody who's been successful inside of this profession. You want to. Oh my God! So only listen to people in multi-level marketing. Don't listen to friends or family that failed, that gave up on their dreams, that have never done a multi-level marketing company. He calls it network marketing. Obviously, you know, don't listen to them because they gave up on their dreams a long time ago, and they're just haters. Obviously, he didn't say they're haters, but we've seen enough MLM content to understand what he's doing here. This is this is fascinating. Give those people who give you coaching and feedback and advice and try and do this better. Give those that that a much more weight than others. But even there, you've still got to be a, a person who ultimately discerns and makes your own decision. Because even there, sometimes they're saying stuff that isn't, that doesn't work. That isn't, that doesn't work. Like what? The an income disclosure statement, statistics and data from the FTC. Oh, man, this is wild. They're repeating things that were told to them that isn't really real. Even <laughs> Eric. They're repeating, I know I'm pausing this a lot. I have a lot to say about this. They're repeating things that were said to them that aren't real. Sir, the income disclosure statement from the company that this whatever family member is part of, if they have one, is that real? The statistics and data from the FTC, is that real? People's personal experiences with these companies, is that real? This is, <laughs> this is wild. I know I, I keep saying that, but it's like, I can see what he's doing. Whereas when I was in an MLM and I had the very, you know, I'm not I, uh, constantly filling my ears with uh, positive MLM information, podcasts, stuff like that. I would have eaten this up and I probably did. I don't know when this was from, but. I would have eaten this up and been like, yeah, you're right. You know, they just, they don't know because they've never been a part of it. Just because somebody has never been a part of multi-level marketing does not make their opinion or the information that they're sharing from the FTC, from their, you know, the company that their friend or family member is a part of, that doesn't make it less important. That doesn't make it untrue. I mean, if you just don't want people listening to those that are sharing statistics and data, just say that. Even there. So what I love to be a student of and the feedback that I, I crave the most is, is from experience and from observation and from, from looking at what other people do and from credi credible sources, what's really working. And, and give that a lot of weight, okay? And the crazy part about that is feedback is typically designed to make things better. Whether it's positive, negative, somewhere in between, feedback is designed to improve something, a person, a process, something along those lines. And you need all of that feedback in order to make things better. And multi-level marketing is the only industry where I have seen, don't listen to the negative feedback. Don't listen to the haters. You know, if, if it were such an incredible industry, you would think that they wouldn't be so threatened by the negative feedback, by the statistics and data, you would think they would look at it and go, okay, we need to make this better. We need to do this different. And there's so many people that are like, oh, we're gonna do multi-level marketing different. We're gonna do network marketing different. No, it's not because in order for that to happen, the business model has to change. When you have a business model that is designed to reward people that are recruiting far more fi financially versus this selling of a product, that's a problem because people that are looking to make extra money are going to go, oh, well, my leader that I just got off the Zoom with says that I have to recruit people to make more money. They are doing this. They have this amount of team members. And so I'm going to replicate what my leader is doing because they're successful. So it's the same kind of uh, thing that he's talking about. But the problem is 
when you have an industry of people that are making more money off of recruiting other people to do the very same thing that they're doing in in essence creating their own competition even though they're they're supposed to train these people hey just do what i do just do what i do which i have talked about this before is the complete opposite of what marketing is supposed to be marketing is designed for you to stand out from the competition but when you have these copy and paste messages when you have these copy and paste posts you know that they're taking from other team members they're using the same pictures and a perfect example of this is elamir from last summer right before they launched everybody saw the same picture they were photoshopping stuff they were using fruit roll-ups and and cheese and all kinds of stuff which deceptive marketing in my opinion but when you are are copying what your upline is doing everybody is the same there's there's no standing out the only people that stand out in my opinion in that scenario are the leaders that's where you see the income claims that's where you see the lifestyle claims that's where you see the cars and all of that stuff and that's why people typically will they'll see this kind of uh content and it's all the same and they're gonna go well who's everybody tagging and they go right to the leader so yeah very odd to me when it comes to the cynics when it comes to the super negative caustic uh pessimistic aggressively um uh, negative people i learned to give them almost zero weight almost zero I'd love to. I would love, Eric, for you to define negative because I don't think that that word means what you think it means. And the way that we typically see multi level marketers use that is anybody that doesn't agree with them is negative. Anybody that's in a multi level marketing company that is looking at what's going on and is questioning what's going on am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Is this the mentor I really am supposed to be working with? Whatever that looks like by their use of the word negative, those people are negative because you're using critical thinking skills. So I would love for him to define negative because at the beginning of this, he talked about needing feedback. He talked about, hey, you, you've got to decide what's, what's true and untrue. Well, you can't really negate statistics and data. You can't negate people's stories and experiences. You can't negate those that are like, hey, you're making a little bit of money on the sale of a product, but it, you're according to this comp plan, you have to heavily recruit in order to make any kind of substantial income. And most people aren't doing that. So I would love for him to define the word negative because they're not using it as the definition says, you know? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I was mature enough to give them zero weight but I'm not. Somebody does some nasty video about me or something. I don't like it, but I don't dwell on it. There was a time when I did. So just learn to understand. How many of you think that if he were to happen, if he were to see this video, if he would think it was nasty and vile and negative, comment below and let me know what you guys think. Understand. Uh, some of the most successful people I know in business, they, it's almost like they can't hear the negative. They can't hear the no. They can't hear the, uh, uh, the, the cynical opinion. They can't hear, because they, they know what they know. They're just like, eh, rolls off. Like a water off a duck's back. It just rolls off. Like, nope, that has no weight. Toss it. That has something, not, a, not everything that that person said was, was right, but there's a piece. And I learned to be a collector of the little pieces that would help me create a, a, a life plan. But not let the people who, through their own pain and suffering, are trying to spread the suffering around. Trying to spread the suffering around. I feel like he has that backwards. Because when you have somebody people in, in his audience right now that paid, you know, 250 to a thousand dollars plus for this ticket to whatever event this is probably go, this is probably from GoPro. You know, when you look at the statistics, the majority of people in this business are not making any money. 
So 99.7% of the people in his audience are not making any money, but he's still getting paid because they paid for the tickets. So it behooves him to keep people there and to prevent them from questioning, well, hey, my family member's concerned. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe, you know, I should do something else. Maybe I should go back to, you know, my job, or maybe I should start my own business. I've always loved this, you know, or whatever. Um, it behooves him to keep people in those chairs. It behooves him for people to not critically think about what they're doing or the feedback from people that love and respect them. It behooves him to do that. That was a hard one for me because I'm a people pleaser. Growing up, I was always wanting to please people. I want people to like me, I want all that stuff. My confidence level changed dramatically when I let go of other people's opinions. <laughs> as far as not let go completely, but gave proper meaning to other people's opinions. Just realize you don't need to agree, and that's okay. And that, that doesn't make you my enemy if you disagree. Right. <laughs> it just makes you a person with a different opinion. And that's okay. Enjoy it. You know, have at it. Enjoy your life. I'm going to go down this road. Enjoy it. Have at it. Is it just me or does that seem a little passive aggressive? We just have differences of opinions and that's fine. Enjoy it. It's giving, bless your heart, but not meaning it in a kind way. All right. I want to wish you the best. I don't need to win this conversation. I don't need everybody in my business. All right. <sighs> well, that's that. Um, I find it interesting like I said, kind of at the beginning of this video, how people that are in a multi-level marketing company sort people's opinions, whether it's somebody that is following them on social media and all of a sudden they get a cold message and they're like, hey, I'm not a fan of this. I don't support MLMs. And they're like, listen, this isn't an MLM. And then it starts that whole process of them explaining how their MLM is different. It's not really an MLM, but it's sort of kind of or if it's a family member that's like, I'm really concerned this, I haven't seen very good things about this. Have you watched this video? Uh, here's the income disclosure statement. Here's what the FTC says, those types of things. It's just interesting to me how they sort that and they won't listen to anybody's feedback that has had a personal experience or is delivering statistics and data. Fascinating to me. So the fact that he was doing this at one of his events, it behooves him, just like I said a few minutes ago. You know, he's got to keep those, as he calls it, butts and seats because it's paying his bills. And if people stay in multi-level marketing and attend his events, and in my opinion, these are absolutely indoctrination events. He's teaching people to not critically think when it comes to those that are concerned and saying, hey, maybe maybe this is not what you should be joining. Or, you know, I've noticed that your social media has become nothing but about your your network marketing business, your multi-level marketing company, like you used to post stuff that you love that you loved or, you know, your kids. And now it's just really about recruiting. Those opinions are important. Very, very important. So anyways. I uh, was very excited to do this video because like some of the other companies that I've covered, I kind of have an inside view of this. So I can see how I would have reacted when I was in multi-level marketing and I can see now kind of everything a lot more clearer. So let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like me to cover more of Eric Worry's content or any other coach. Or, yeah. We'll just leave it at that. If you love today's video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Thank you guys for all of your comments. I appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe. It helps me get the word out to more people and uh, hopefully prevent them from joining a multi-level marketing company or help them understand that they're not the failure if multi-level marketing is not working for them. It's not them failing. It's the business model. And that's what's really, really important. So I appreciate you guys so much. Don't join an MLM. Okay. All right. That's all I've got for you today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.